Good morning, this is uh, Pixie doing a quick video. Um, so I just kick it off and um, basically I'll be working on this um, special type of doll. Uh, I might as well show her so she's playing. <laughs> um, let's watch as only walking by. Yeah, basic, basically I pretty much um, finished her off at the moment. She's got um, like the Lumerian crystal. Uh, uh, yeah, and so she's got another, she's got some uh, like a crystal in there, a little charm. So you've got uh, a rose quartz type, um, type crystal on there. Um, I've done a, <laughs> done a dress, she's got like a petticoat thing dress underneath. Um, so yeah, lots of changes and things. I think the joy is of making stuff basically. Um, so she might have a few extras that have got to go in there. But it's just kind of a make it and it's like an ornament in one at one level. Um, I did notice when I stuck it on a table that it was it kind of looked like it was breathing, so you could see this sort of um, pulse around it. Um, that's what I was picking up sort of on spiritually because I've got a what I've got this like they call this a solenoid where it coils the wire, and um, basically I mean most around you is a certain amount of electricity anyway, certain types of different types of electricity, and what it would go it does is it goes round, it's attracted to the copper wire. And it follows it round, and as it goes round close round itself, it actually increases in in um, intensity. So it's a bit like um, what you get with, uh, say, a hurricane or something like that, where it starts out as a subtle movement and builds up a certain amount of force. And so as it's building up a certain amount of force, it's also generating a, another inf it's, it's a field of influence basically over, over energy around it. So normally. When things are balanced, they um, they sort of neutralise each other. But if you can create some an imbalance or an influx, that's when you cause a change like that. Um, so it's got crystals in it as well. I think it's got about two crystals in it. Um, what has it got? One crystal, a, um, a pine cone, a Norwegian pine cone in it, and then I wrapped wrapped the coil around it and um, some a mixture of sort of um, different elements in the actual uh, resin. Um, then it's um, once all the resin's been sealed. It's been sealed in the in a kind of like a, a wine glass. It was a plastic one. Um, it's put inside that because sometimes with resin you can, it gets a bit sticky if you start adding lots of different um, elements to it because it doesn't always react so well with the um, with the polyester resin. Um, it can have a, a bit of a, a weird effect upon it. Um, and then in the head, I've got a small. Um, Got like a small uh, pine cone, and it's wrapped, got a coil in there, and other little crystal stones are dropped in it, and and I still it's head in its head. It's got like um, clay and stuff like that, so it's pretty pretty secure. And then I've just built up the body around it as well, and um, the other sort of um, sort of structure. And then I've sort of finished it off. I've um, I've been uh, the, the little chains are something I just picked up in one of these hobby craft places. Just got a few meter, got a meter of this sort of like aluminium type um, gold coated uh, chain. So that's, and then I've got um, some polished, pre some precious stones that I've added to it to sort of give it give it the feel basically. And then I've just wrapped wire to cause a seal on it. Um, also within the uh, doll I created, so it's got magnets inside it. They're not really strong enough to cause any particular type of force around them. Um, but they add a certain like portals in essence, drawing energy. Um, other experiments have been involved. I was, tr I was trying to grow an actual cannabis plant, but I fed it Ormus. Now the Ormus I had on it was probably a bit salty. It started wilting a bit. And I thought, well, this would pick it up. So I gave it a bit of this, the flu clearer fluid of the of the almost, and uh, uh, with the salt, the salt, cannabis and salt don't like each other. And um, <laughs> it's basically, I may have killed it. So I'm going to see how resilient it is. I've poisoned it, basically. So it's, it's shriveled up and sort of folded over. It. But I've made a structure so I can hold it in place. So basically, I've added another of these solenoid things, and I've put the actual plant in. The plant's wrapped around... So the, the the wire wrapped around the plant and it keeps it upright because it just flop over, and um, so, so hopefully the intention is that it 
it actually regenerates. But it, I might have just killed it. At least I know, you know, maybe just, just stick to keeping it quite basic, really, when you do things. I mean, people do use Ormus on plants, but it possibly the type of plant as well. <clears throat> you have to understand how um, it might ma metabolise differently. So not everything's going to like a good dosage of... Um, of uh, magnesium and sulfur and all of other different salts. It's definitely like minerals plants, obviously, but um, they don't all process the same minerals. That's why they got with herbs. You got certain properties that vary are different. Um, like I don't know, for example, garlic has um, silver in it, so that's why it's always been to anti like vampire, <laughs> werewolf, or whatever. So there's some truth in it. I don't know. You know, if you get a sort of weird, if you had a being that wasn't human. Um, silver could be quite poisonous to it. I don't don't know the more these interdimensional type stuff. Um, so I may may look at trying to get some new seeds and just as a kind of experiment. I want to grow it and just actually just use the leaves and different things like drinks and whatever. Um, and then you know so might even make something quite quite unique. Um, I did think about sealing some in resin. I don't know what the impact would that be. Whether it'd actually be. Um, I mean, I could put it within the organ, um, and then see what happens. Um, and I think with my my vault organ pyramid, I'm just gonna put some precious stones. I've got these semi-precious stones. I'll just fill the bottom of that vault. I've still got my multi in it in, in, in the actual um, the vault, and I could probably say my clairvoyant abilities have increased. Um, I think, um, well. It's the impact. When I went around with brothers, he said it's happened before. Basically, his PlayStation um, 4, um, his, his Wi-Fi seems to uh, seems to mess up. It seems to crash out. He says it doesn't normally do that. It only happens when you you come around. Well, that's quite interesting. That had this sort of impact on it. Um, it caused a lag or something with it. But it's only happened twice, and it's always when I've been around. Otherwise, outside of that, it doesn't happen. So, um, so that's that's interesting. And um, just sent some things, a bit of deja vu, and and stuff like that. So I don't think there's anything else worth sharing with you guys. Um, probably not. There's not not a lot really going on because it's getting at the end of the year and things are winding down. I don't really think there's much scare. I wouldn't worry about things like Nibiru. I think it's past. I got this feeling that it just seems to be like it's all calming down. So unless I have to do a bit of an earthquake check and so on, maybe the planet's changing anyway. But actually, I only think out in the solar system is pretty much much under wraps uh, or, or whatever that might be because we don't know what really is out there I, I think it's more like different dimensions um, so you go through a bunch through the atmosphere into, into a different dimension in the same way that my cells you know I know they're there but I can't actually I don't actually see them individually um, I'm, a, I'm a collective so kind of like the way the world is sort of a collective energy um, that makes what it is and Different planets are different, different, um, different portals of energy, I guess. Um, so there is no separation. I mean, the separation is the dark, of the void. Um, but if there wasn't a void, then everything would be one, I guess. And would we want that? Would we all want to be sort of stuck in one place? Uh, we wouldn't have any individuality, possibly. We'd just lose all that. We'd become a multi-dimensional um, um, being. And it makes you wonder about creative consciousness, like if 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 that's but the word God or, or whatever that might be, if it was um, at one stage just a multi-dimensional thing, it could never really know itself. It's so sort of vast in this kind of what it is, trying to make sense of its being. That by creating separation and creation is probably a kind of retrospect way of analysing itself as well as growing. Um, and so what we're doing now is we're doing the reverse. We're going from a more, more simpler um, state of consciousness to a more advanced. So we're building up layers. Or maybe it always was like that. And we're just like the um, the children of something, of something greater. And um, what that might be and, and sort of what, what sort of access do we have to um, to what we can become. And, this, um, and also there's things like you get a lot of interaction as well and it's not like on bonkers this is basically um i might be a bit zany sometimes but there's um 
you kind of get, you think about a subject or something and an answer pops in your head and it's kind of your internal dialogue. Um, but it's not always from you, you can sense it's something else, like um, like uh, I was thinking about, I thought to myself that basically all, all sort of aliens seem to be interdimensional, they don't seem to be in the same dimension, which is probably what, where I come back about this planet stuff, if they come from another planet, they're in a different frequency, different frequency, um, we can take Martian rocks and things and put it in this, in this dimension, but maybe it changes, you know, that kind of feel like stardust, where in a different dimension it becomes something different, so, um, so this sort of, um, I can't remember if she was an angel or what she was, but if she if she went across a certain barrier, she'd be no more than a rock. But in another in another reality, she becomes an entity, a living entity. So it's um, you know, you take a Martian rock to Mars, will it be the same thing? Which would be quite strange. Or what happens if a human goes to Mars? We talk about different stuff going on up there, but there may be humans already there. It may actually be like this, but from the outside, it looks like it looks like a red barren planet. It's, um, I don't know, I mean, I'd have to look at some of this footage. I mean, I don't think it's exactly like this, but I just, just that possibly there could be an atmosphere that's more breathable. There could be, um, there could be something with inside the planet itself. All you're looking at is the crust, and actually, um, inside it might be greener. They might actually have sort of a thriving ecosystem. Um, but yeah, coming back to different things, I was meant for dialogue, so I thought about, that they're all interdimensional, and some something said, kind of this a thought and head said they're in the, they're in the astro field. So I'd have to sort of research what that means, and and also you know, it's kind of this is this sort of internal thinking. You you normally think of it as like immorality or um, or some ethics or something like that part of you, but then that you know like if you make a choice and you feel it's bad, you sometimes have a feeling it's bad, but then if you get a kind of um, internal dialogue around it as well, it's possibly a aspect of yourself that's, that exists in another reality, so that's, um, that's, um, complicated. So, anyway, this is, this is Pixie sign off, thanks for listening, and speak to you soon.